Topic. Environmental Studies. Biosphere. Biomes. Environment. Ecosystem. Abiotic Factors and Biotic Factors. Aims of Lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to know the concept biosphere of the interconnectedness with and components of the global ecosystem, the hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere. The concept biome. A know the difference between terrestrial and aquatic biomes of Southern Africa. The concept environment. Uh, the concepts ecosystems, abiotic and biotic factors. Introduction. I revise the topics, biosphere and ecosystems, in grades 7 and 8. Concepts and skills. Below are definitions of some of the terms that you will study under this section. Use your textbook and underline all the new terms slash words that you encounter while studying through this section. Use the glossary in your textbook to define these new terms slash words. Note, at least two marks are awarded if you can define a term correctly in a test or examination. Lithosphere, the soil and rocks comprising the outer layer of the earth. Atmosphere, the layer of gases surrounding the earth. Hydrosphere, all the water on the surface of the earth. Biome, a large area with a certain climate and a specific variety of plants and animals. Ecosystem, a particular area where biotic and abiotic components interact with each other. Ecology, the study of the relationships or interactions between living organisms and between the organisms and their natural environment. Hygroscopic water, the layer of water that adheres to soil particles and cannot be easily absorbed by plant roots. Capillary water, Water that is found between soil particles and that is easily absorbed by plant roots. Study the following content. Biosphere. The biosphere is that part of the earth where living organisms occur. The biosphere is the global sum of all ecosystems. The biosphere consists of the a atmosphere, the layer of air that surrounds the earth and that consists of a mixture of gases, e.g. nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. A lithosphere, the soil and rocks comprising the outer layer of the earth. A hydrosphere, includes all the water on the surface of the earth, e.g. oceans, rivers, lakes, etc. Biomes. A biome is a particular physical environment that usually extends over a large geographical area. Uh, it has a certain climate, which supports a particular group of plants and animals. Uh, there are two types of biomes, i.e. terrestrial, land, and aquatic, water, biomes. The following terrestrial biomes are found in South Africa. Fainbos, forest, grasslands, savanna, thicket, Nama Karoo, succulent Karoo, and desert. Aquatic biomes are areas of water with a combination of salinity, temperature, and nutrient levels, e.g. inland, freshwater, coastal, saltwater, and marine, saltwater, biomes. Environment. Uh, the environment is the physical conditions, such as soil, water, air, temperature, etc., and the biological conditions under which an organism lives. Ecosystem. An ecosystem is a particular area, e.g. a pond, a forest, etc., consisting of all different living organisms, biotic components, which interact with each other, and their non-living environment, abiotic components. Abiotic factors. The abiotic factors include the following. A physiographic factors, aspect, slope, and altitude. Idaphic, soil, factors, pH, humus content, texture, water retention capacity, and air content. A light, day length, and seasonal changes. Temperature. Effect of day slash night and seasons. A uh, water, water cycle, and the importance of wetlands. Atmospheric gases. A wind. Physiographic factors. Aspect slope altitude. A uh, aspect refers to the position of an area in relation to the sun. In South Africa, north facing slopes receive more sunlight than south facing slopes. A north facing slopes are warmer and drier. South, 
Facing slopes are cooler and wetter, and shade plants, e.g. ferns, grow well in such areas. But the slope of a mountain determines the rate of water runoff. The runoff of water on a steep slope is faster and soil erosion will occur more frequently. Uh, the soil on a steep slope is usually shallow and infertile and few plants and animals will be present. Uh, areas high above sea level experience extreme weather conditions, e.g. strong winds and snow. Uh, plants and animals that are found high above sea level will differ from those closer to sea level. Edaphic Soil Factors Soil texture, soil, air, water, retention, capacity, humus content, pH. Uh, there are three types of soil, i.e. clay, loam, and sand. A clay consists of small soil particles. Loam has slightly bigger particles, and sandy soil has large particles. A spaces between soil particles are filled with air and water. A sandy soil has bigger spaces between soil particles and is well aerated. Clay soil is poorly aerated. A sandy soil has a low water retention capacity because of the large spaces between soil particles. A clay soil has a high water retention capacity. A loam has a medium water retention capacity and is the most suitable soil for plant growth. A humus is decayed plant and animal matter. A humus increases soil fertility and water retention capacity. Soil with humus is normally dark in color. Some plants, e.g. proteas, grow better in acidic soil, low pH. Succulent plants grow better in alkaline soil, high pH. Most plants grow well in soil with a neutral pH, pH of 7. Light. A plants need light for photosynthesis. The effect of day length on the growth of a plant is called photoperiodism. A short day plants only flower when the day length is shorter than 12 hours. A long day plants need a day length of more than 12 hours. A neutral plants are plants that are not affected by day length. A some animals, e.g. moths and bats, are nocturnal, active at night. Temperature. Uh, the temperature that plants and animals are exposed to varies between day and night and between summer and winter, e.g. ectothermic animals, fish, amphibians, reptiles, become inactive during cold winter temperatures. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in autumn to limit photosynthesis and growth. Water. Oh, water is one of the most important factors in any ecosystem. Hydrophytes, mesophytes, serophytes. Uh, plants that grow in water, e.g. water lilies. Uh, plants that grow in areas with moderate water supply, e.g. fruit trees, wheat, etc. Uh, plants that grow in extremely dry conditions, e.g. aloe. Water cycle. Uh, the water cycle is the cyclic movement of water between the earth and the atmosphere. Uh, water moves from the atmosphere to the earth in the form of rain, snow, fog, hail, and dew. This is called precipitation. A uh, part of the water that reaches the earth is absorbed by the upper layers of soil to form hygroscopic and capillary water. Some of the water filters through the upper layers of the soil to the water table. This process during which water is absorbed by the soil is known as infiltration. Uh, some of the water runs off above the ground and forms streams and rivers that flow into lakes and oceans. A uh, water reaches the atmosphere by evaporation from large water masses and from the soil. Uh, plants transpire and lose water to the atmosphere in the form. Importance of wetlands uh, Wetlands include a wide range of inland and coastal habitats, e.g. lagoons and estuaries, that are linked by rivers and streams. Examples of wetlands are springs, swamps, riverbanks, etc. Uh, wetlands provide a regular water supply, and the water is filtered naturally by vegetation. Uh, wetlands play an important role in maintaining biodiversity as it supports a variety of plant and animal life. Atmospheric gases. The air around us consists of a mixture of gases. A nitrogen, 78%. A oxygen, 21%. A carbon dioxide, 0, 0,04%. A other gases, zero, 96%. Wind. A wind, moving air, increases the processes of evaporation and transpiration.
Biotic factors. The biotic component includes all living organisms, plants, and animals in an ecosystem. Producers, consumers, decomposers. A green plants are called producers because they contain chlorophyll and can produce their own organic food through photosynthesis. A producers are autotrophic organisms. A animals are consumers because they cannot produce their own organic food, but they use the food produced from the plants. Consumers are referred to as heterotrophic organisms. A primary consumers, e.g. sheep, rabbits, locusts, etc. feed directly on the producers, plants. Primary consumers are also called herbivores. A secondary consumers, e.g. lions, owls, dogs, humans, etc. feed on the primary consumers and include carnivores and omnivores. A carnivores, e.g. lion, Alls, etc. feed on animal matter. Oh, omnivores, e.g. humans, feed on both animal and plant matter. Uh, tertiary consumers, e.g. snakes, feed on secondary consumers and are all carnivores. Uh, decomposers, e.g. saprophytic bacteria and fungi, feed on dead organic matter. They break down organic compounds into simple inorganic compounds that are released back into the environment. Decomposers are also heterotrophic organisms. Know the meaning of instructional verbs in test and examination questions, e.g. Instructional verb. Meaning. Name. Give the name of something. Differentiate. Use differences to qualify between two or more categories. Tabulate. Draw a table and indicate the answers as direct pairs. Describe. State in sentences the main points of a process. Explain. Give your answer in a cause effect or a statement and reason sequence. Compare. Give similarities and differences between concepts. Answer the following questions. Question 1. The diagram below shows an ecosystem in the Southern Hemisphere. Free State P2 November 2016. 1.1 state 2 visible physiographic factors as indicated in the diagram. 1.2 which slope, north facing or south facing, will be cooler during the day? 1.3 explain your answer to question 1.2. 1.4 tabulate the differences between the north facing and south facing slopes with regard to the amount of water in the soil and the amount of vegetation. Question 2. 2. Study the diagram of the water cycle below. Free State P2 November 2016. 2.1 Identify processes A, B, and C. 2.2 State the influence of global warming on process B. 2.3 Explain the consequences of your answer in question 2.2 on the Earth. 2.4 Name two examples of the biological process represented by D. Question 3. 3. The diagram below represents an ecosystem, Free State P2 November 2017. 3.1 Name 3 abiotic factors visible in the diagram. 3.2 Name 2 biotic factors visible in the diagram. Question 4. 4. 3 soil samples, taken from different regions, were analyzed for air content, permeability to water, and humus content. The results obtained are shown in the table below. DB Exemplar P2 2012, Soil Sample ABC. Air Content, Percent, 30, 10, 60. Permeability to Water, ML of Water Passing Through 100 G of Soil Per Minute, 20, 5, 70. Humus Content, Percent, 25, 10, 5. 4.1 according to the results above, which soil sample, A, B, or C, would be as follows. A, loam. B, clay. C, sand. 4.2 explain the disadvantages for the plants growing in soil sample B with regard to the permeability to water. 4.3 name two factors relating to the composition of soil sample B that resulted in its low permeability to water. 4.4 state two advantages of a higher percentage of humus for the soil. Question 5. 5. 
A group of learners noticed that certain areas on a sports field are covered with standing water. Certain areas are very moist but not saturated, while others show dry areas. Surprised about the phenomenon, they decided to investigate why this is the case. When the area dried out, they took soil samples from the field, A, B, and C, and did an experiment. The results are shown in the table below. Free State P2 November 2017 Soil Sample ABC Mass of Soil Sample 50G 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 Volume Water Added 100 milliliters 100 milliliters 100 milliliters Volume Water Retained 30 milliliters 82 milliliters 59 milliliters 5.1 Name the soil sample that retained the most water. 5.2 State the deductions that can be made from the results of the investigation with reference to the different soil samples, A, B, and C, found on the sports field. 5.3 Name one variable that must be kept constant when the investigation is done. 5.4 Calculate how much water drained through soil C. Show all calculations. Common errors made by learners in examinations and not familiar with basic terminology and not understanding instructional verb slash s in a question e.g. the difference between describe and explain and not able to interpret information in diagrams slash tables and to do calculations. Activities slash assessment. Complete the activities slash questions in your textbook on the sections of this lesson. Consolidation. A define all the terminology relevant to the concepts covered in this lesson. I interpret diagrams and data in tables. Values. A by studying and learning about this section, you will develop a deep understanding of the ways in which humans have impacted negatively on the environment and organisms living in it. You will also develop an awareness of what it means to be a responsible citizen in terms of the environment and develop a deep appreciation of the unique diversity of past and present biomes in Southern Africa and the importance of conservation.